Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. Today I'm going to be working on some broad axe handles. I have uh, one that I need to make for a fellow who is one of our subscribers. I've mentioned him before. Uh, it's James at uh, Old School with a Modern Twist. It'll be a left-handed handle. I have some ash that I actually cut last winter. Pretty good a bolt of it here. And I've split it out because I like to, to split wood to use for an axe handle. As you can see, I've, I've got it drawn out here somewhat on the wood that I'm going to use. Now, I've got a knot right here that I hope doesn't uh, bother me. I'm going to try to sneak around it if I possibly can. And I'm going to cut this out roughly with a chainsaw and uh, do my shaping, a lot of the shaping with a chainsaw. I have another one here that I was working on uh, yesterday and actually I think it will make a nice handle. There's a little bit of a checking going on where the head would go on the handle here. It's got some splits in it but I'm not sure that that would really affect anything all that much. So I'm going to go ahead and work this out and finish shaping it. And there again I have used that pattern that I like on a single bit axe and on my other broad axes. Uh, this, this is somewhat the pattern that I've used. It's uh, got the, the curve to it, the fawn's foot down here, and it's, it'll be about a 28 inch handle. So I'm gonna get to working on this and cut this one here out of this uh, piece that I've split. Now this wood's not totally dry, but it, it's workable and I think I'll be able to make a handle out of it for Mr. James. I've got this piece clamped to the end of the sawhorse with the biggest part of it sticking out here to where I can actually get around it with a chainsaw. I really wish I had my other saw here. It's got a carbon bar on it. It's a little bit easier to, to shape with, but we'll see how it works. I used it yesterday on the other handle, so I'm gonna use it again on, on cutting this piece out here. I'm going to take my chainsaw and brush this real lightly down to this line. I'm not sure this is kind of in the shade over here where you can actually see all of it, but uh, I will start making this contour here of the shape of the handle and clean up all the, the rough cut there. got uh, this handle somewhat in shaped out. I uh, sanded it with a grinder and now I, I'm beginning to uh, take this spoke shave, <coughs> set real light, and I am put, uh, actually smoothing the handle up to where it would fit your hand comfortably. Uh, this being a left hand handle, uh, that area right there would be where your left hand uh, grips the axe. I'm leaving quite a bit of wood on this area where the head will be. That way the axe, the, the broad axe, can be hung closed or more open. And uh, it, they may want to actually cant it a little bit more uh, to clear the knuckles. I am going to steam this 
and bend it right in that area there. I'll put it in a jig and I'll leave it there for several days till it sets. But I'm going to go ahead and take this spoke shave and I'll probably do a little bit more with the grinder with the sanded disc on it. Using a spoke shave on something like this where there's a curve in the handle, your grain, unless you have grain that has grown that direction, which is kind of hard to ever find a, a perfect piece of wood to make a handle that's got a, an S shape like this. So you have to work it and uh, make it do what you want it to do. So your grain of the wood is, will be going back and forth. So I may have to come this direction with the spoke shave on part of it and then turn around and then go back the other way. See, it's digging in right there and that's not what I want. I want it to cut across the grain and cut smooth. So I'll be doing this and working this down to where it is a comfortable fit on the on your hand. I've got the handle in this pan of water. You can see the bubbles there, it's beginning to boil. I had to put a little bit of weight on the, the end of it to keep it down in the water. It was trying to float. I'm going to let this boil for a while and soak in the, this really hot water. It's pretty warm. Clamp down. Okay, we'll let that set, we'll let it dry, and then we'll come back and do the final finishing touches to it. Alright, I'm back again after about three weeks of when I started these handles. Um, I've had them in these bending jigs here, uh, sitting in a little building where they were out of the weather, and the temperature was pretty constant. And I'm going to take the clamps off. Now that one didn't seem to move any at all as far as flexing back to its original shape. I think it's going to be a good one. There'll need to be more wood taken off here to actually fit into the head of the axe. They offset the bend, the little wedge that I made, kept the, the right curvature of the handle. It's got a nice feel to it. All right, let's check this other one. It also didn't seem to come back with just a very, very, very little bit. It seems to have done very well also. Nice left-handed handle. It'll need to be cleaned up. And using the grinder that, like I do, uh, it leaves the handle somewhat rough to the feel, but I've got another handle here. Now the, these two are left hand handles here, but this is a right hand handle. And a little bit earlier I took a, a palm sander with some 100 grit paper on it, sandpaper, and I just started sanding this and it's really, really becoming really slick. It's got a nice feel to it. Now you can do this with a piece of broken glass, but uh, for me, I like to use a palm sander. It seems to speed the process up quite a bit. I have here a, a wood rasp that actually works really well in, in smoothing that up and getting rid of the little sharp edges of the, after grinding it or shaping it with a draw knife or spoke shave. This works really good where you can just kind of round those over. And uh, 
if you have a one that's pretty good, uh, fairly new, it, it'll cut really well. I've used these a lot in, in making stuff or smoothing up the handle or working on the eye that'll go through the, the eye of the ax. But this will, this will cut fairly quick. And then you can come back with some sandpaper if you want to, if you want it really slick. This is a piece of ash, but the growth rings were somewhat in favor with the shape of this handle. I used the strength of the way the, the tree grew, and I just shaped it uh, kind of accordingly, and it really worked out nice. It, your handle, this part of the handle will be stronger if, if the growth rings have a tendency to kind of go in that curve. I have a piece of wood here, and you can see now this is not a piece that I would use for a handle because it's split right through here. But you can see how the, how the grain kind of curves and you can use that to your advantage in making a handle. Uh, you can kind of see that the way that's turning, coming down through here, your head would be here and the handle back here. But this is really not a good enough piece. I just wanted to show you the way the, the grain went in, in, a, in a curve that you can use that to your advantage in making a handle. It probably would be a good idea to take some boiled linseed oil and to rub into this handle really good to help preserve it. And Rock of Ages USA will put grease on the, the wood where it goes through the, the eye of the axe and it helps to preserve the wood there. You've probably heard about people having the axe uh, head to get loose on their handle and they would soak it in water to swell the wood up. Well that will work for a while but what happens when that wood swells up after it's already been seasoned and it's contained in the head or the eye of the axe that actually causes that w the wood fibers to crush and when it dries back out it's going to be looser than it was before. So I don't recommend putting an, an axe head in water to swell the, the wood up. Uh, I think it's best to get a good fit to begin with, get a good wedge in it, and keep it tight to start with to where you don't ever have to do that because you actually just ruin your handle when you, when you soak it in water. That's my opinion anyway. I want to thank you for joining me in this, uh, this video and making a handle for your broad axe. Uh, I wish you the best when you make your handle and if there's anything that I can do to help just leave a comment maybe I can say something that will give you some pointers more than perhaps what I've showed you but I do appreciate you joining me I uh, ask you to just uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this subscribe if you haven't and share our videos we, we appreciate you so much God bless